Room Tone Podcast is a show produced by us, three movie nerds shooting the shit while talking about shooting the shit. Each episode builds upon the last, so we recommend starting at the beginning. Now, let's make a movie. Well, what's freaking poppin', y'all? Welcome to radio. Live and in color. FM AM all the time. Maddie, I'm gonna beat you, you motherfucker. Maddie and I just fell into a staring contest. Please hold. Ah. I can't really express the tension in the room. Dang it. I looked at you. Oh right my left. god. <laughs> Ooh, I can't believe I won that. By default. Yeah, barely. What did, I, uh, did, did, I, I, did I do something? Did I break your concentration? I just looked at you. Oh. Like, you think you can look a different direction, but sometimes your eyes just... Blink. Blink. I don't even know if you blinked until you looked back at me and then you blinked. Oh, see, so maybe it was, it's all in your head. You had a fake blink. I guess. So in today, so today we're just going to be um, having staring contests. Enjoy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's good radio. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we stare at each other too and we talk about bu- 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 budget. Uh, of course, this is, I guess, is the banter portion. Or maybe we just jump into it. Yeah. Let's just banter. jump into it. Fuck them. Yeah, we've got conversations to have, but mm. uh, yeah, we got shit to do today. Yeah. We got business talk. We got to talk a lot of business. Should we do our intros? Let's get busy on this episode of Room Tone. Pause for a theme song. I think one day we should write lyrics for our theme song, just for us. I I would be curious to listen hear that. Honestly, all I can think of is the Ducktales theme song right now. <laughs> <laughs> we should just play. Tone. <laughs> it's the room tone. We should play the Ducktales theme song instead of room tone in this episode and just see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> no one says anything. Just see if anyone mentions it. <laughs> if anyone does mention it, we just say, "What do you mean?" Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so. If just this gets go and it. change it back to the actual yeah. <laughs> just gas upload half the country half the half country, the country <laughs> yeah. that's, bold, that's such a bold statement <laughs> my name is austin swain i'm an animator and video production specialist in commercial advertising and today i learned of a movie that i hadn't heard of uh it's called they came together Austin and I, we work in TV, and so we have a big-ass TV in our office, and today that movie came on, and never heard of it, watched it in passing, and God, is it's, just, it's a fever dream. It's like a total like rom-com satire, and it's absolutely stacked with cast, but it's like, it's, it's uh, goofy and just absolutely silly and i thought really well written like there were some there were some good fucking jokes in there you said it was stacked with cast who, who was who was in it uh, uh so I, I guess i can also answer paul rudd yeah it stars instance. paul rudd and amy poehler um and then so like the whole thing is they're having a conversation with bill Hader and uh kimmy schmidt i forget her name i know who you're talking about aaron from the office ellie kemper ellie kemper yeah. thank you um, so they're like, Paul. Paul, yeah, absolutely. I'm very good with names. Paul Rudd and Amy Poehler are like just having a conversation, like are telling the story of how they met. And then mm-hmm. all of the flashbacks are like fucking drilled down rom-com tropes. Yeah. And like all of the dialogue is so like fucking Amy Poehler runs this small like candy shop mm-hmm. and she's standing and she's telling someone, she goes, man, this candy shop is just the one thing that I ever wanted in life. Nothing will ever threaten this dream. And then the person she's talking to, she goes, oh, look, they're building like the candy superstore across the street. (laughs) And it's like, so it's so just like laid out in like such a weird satirical kind of a way. Yeah. Is it old? I've never heard of it. I think I know it must be kind of old. Yeah. Like Bill Hader looked pretty young. And yeah, it? it came out. Yeah. 2014. Hmm. Yeah, no, just very silly. I'll tell you one more joke that I thought was good in it, and then we can move on. So Paul Rudd is meeting Amy Poehler's 
family, essentially. And so he meets her sister and he meets her son, who she didn't know that she had a kid. And and so then he gets a quick word with the sister and the sister goes, oh, don't worry. The dad's not in the picture the, and the kid's around. And she goes, he's doing T-I-M-E in jail. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that made me laugh so fucking hard. Yeah. That, was, that was so great. Oh, my God. I was like, God damn it, that's stupid. But boy, is it funny. <laughs> so watch it, I guess. <laughs> so if you're into that type of humor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> my name is Austin Pesa. I'm an amateur filmmaker. And my movie slash TV show recommendation for the week is... They came together, <laughs> which I don't understand that title. Yeah, I don't either. Let's How keep they talking. came together. You know what? Fuck it. Yeah. Oh, I, they came. They came together. <laughs> <laughs> I was. You thinking, didn't understand that. <laughs> in my head, the meaning of that word was like arrived. So it's like they came together. Like they showed up. Like they showed um, up together. I think it's a double entendre. I think Is it's it a like triple a, entendre. Like it's a sex yeah. joke. Yeah. That's called comedy swing. Yeah. <laughs> Look it up. I'm so sorry to step on your recommendation. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, sure. I'll recommend that. <laughs> okay. But here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I haven't watched it. This is, this is going to be a first. I haven't actually watched this movie. But based on like the jokes that Swain was telling me, <laughs> I, had, I had a laugh. Yeah. It was fun. It's a good, it sounds like a good time. I'm going to watch it. Yeah. There we go. So how, watch it with me. Let me know. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. We'll do it. Maybe we'll do a commentary episode. Ooh. Maybe we won't. <laughs> Break my heart over here. <laughs> You're like, ah! Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> my childlike sense of wonder that you spat on there it. Went. it. There it went. I'm sorry. No, it's all good. My name is Maddie, and I have not seen They Came Together, nor do I have any interest in seeing it. <laughs> you said it sounded like a hoot. <laughs> I did not say that. No, you didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I would never. <laughs> did you think it sounds like a hoot? No. Oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> I do think that's funny for it to be all of our intros, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's my intro. Beautiful. Well, as Austin alluded earlier, we are going to be talking about the budget. Figure yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Why don't we talk about that money? Go get that money. Yeah, we're going to be looking at uh, all the things that we're going to need to make this film happen and just have kind of a frank conversation about what those things might cost and then maybe a little bit of how we're going to raise that money. Yeah. Strap in as we all figure it out together. Yeah. Get your strap-ons. Are we talking about like hypothesizing what these things cost? I think first... Deciding well, what exactly do we need yeah. for this production mm-hmm. and then figuring out what that's going to cost. And then I guess from there, totaling that up, seeing if that's like a reasonable price or what we would probably have to change or what we had just kind of rework some stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's going to be a full conversation today, but it's definitely going to. I think it's a kickoff. Like, let's let's can we say it like that? It's like a kickoff yeah. start of like. Hey, let's like talk about this. Yeah, we're getting the ball rolling. Yeah. So what are we going to need? We're going to need actors. We're going to need actors. We're going to need locations. Locations. We're going to need equipment, potentially. We will need props. And props. And food. And food. Union fees. <laughs> now nah, this ain't Hollywood. Health insurance. This is fucking guerrilla filmmaking right here. Oh yeah, I'm feeling like a gorilla. We do not insure our work. <laughs> <laughs> you just mean a gorilla suit with a camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I practice, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> so can you can you get define guerrilla filmmaking? Oh, I wish I could. Or, or you know, let's. Oh, sorry, let's. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. How about this? I'm gonna look up the definition for guerrilla filmmaking so we can. Is that a thing? Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I can give you my definition. It's like, it's like you know, it's filmmakers who don't really follow the rules. <laughs> <laughs> they play it fast and loose and just kind of do what they need to do and worry about the logistics later. 
It's like guerrilla warfare. It's exactly like guerrilla warfare. <laughs> it's like guerrilla warfare, but make it artsy. Yeah, it's like, you know how they shot Elf in the streets of New York and just kind of like saw what would happen? Mm -hmm. That's a little bit of guerrilla filmmaking. Yeah. The Google definition says guerrilla filmmaking refers to the form of independent filmmaking characterized by ultra low micro budgets, skeleton crews and limited props using whatever resources, locations and equipment is available. Oh, Nice. So, so basically, yeah, small time <clears throat> yeah. filmmaking. Just yeah. ma making it work. Yep. Yep. Uh, the best, like, example of that I can think of is for a short film that I created in college for uh, Skills USA. Uh, we shot in a laundromat and we shot at, like, 1 a.m. when there was, like, no one there and, like, we... I think we shot like two days in there and we were just thinking like, man, I wonder if like whoever looks at the cameras <laughs> are probably confused as fuck as like two people running with like a camera and trying to make like a little story. I love it. Mm -hmm. I would like to see that camera footage. <laughs> be fun. Yeah. Do you guys have an example? Sorry, we can get to it. I feel like all of yeah. every film we've shot has been. We can't spend our whole budget on a gorilla suit. No. Fuck. Fuck. Half, <laughs> half maybe. Yeah. Okay. So I guess let's start with like the big one. Yeah, let's start. Yeah, let's start with those categories. Yeah. Um, yeah and then we can kind of like start to interpolate by like how many days we think we're going to need and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess. What was that? Interpolate? Yeah. What does that mean? It means, well, I guess interpolation means like translating from one position to another huh interpolate my name's austin or president i just learned what interpolate means. yeah <laughs> i've never heard that word in my Did life i, say that I don't right? think. interpolate interpolate yeah interpolate it's an animation term where if object moves from point a to point b the um the temporal interpolation or how it translates over time is defined by like if it moves there like fast at the beginning or fast at the mm. end or fast in the middle, mm. or if it just goes straight over, mm -hmm. um, which people in after effects will know by like the graph editor and things like yeah. that. Um, I, I'm trying to think of how it applies to what I just said, but <laughs> <laughs> I but like it. it yeah. What I'm thinking of is like, if we think an actor is going to cost X amount of dollars per day and we need mm -hmm. this many days, then we can just multiply X by that many days and we've got a final number. That's fair. <laughs> so let's start with like how yeah. many days do we think the, it's going to take? Yeah, the bait. Oh, or is that? Let's start with just like numbers. Okay, like a day rate, and then we can interpolate. Okay, <laughs> multiple days. I see. So yeah, I guess what would our budget be for? What four actors? Five. Is it five? Yeah. For, well, I wonder. I guess it's five actors, but we would only need one of them for less time. Yep. Um, let's Google how much do you pay an actor? Yeah. Okay. Google, show me this man's balls. <laughs> <laughs> Zip Recruiter states that they'll make $15 an hour. <laughs> Ship it. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Which, like, that's fair. Consider we do a 10 hour day. I mean, that's $150 a day. Which uh, that's, I would take that yeah, as yeah. an actor. Yeah. Do we want to just call it $200 a day? Sure. For an actor? I feel like that's what we've paid actors before. It's like $150 a day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, 20 bucks, a, 20 bucks an hour for 10 hours, I feel like it's decent. Yeah, I'd be happy with that. Yeah. I'll act for that. Can I be in it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what, really? Yeah. I've been told I'm a good Donnie. Yeah. <laughs> we should just act it out. <laughs> 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 we're putting guys, ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> Change it's of pace. Time. We're going to do a play. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's invited. Yeah. Uh, so $200 per day, five actors. Technically four actors. One we basically need to like take a picture of. And dress up. As a dead guy. Mm -hmm. Aw, dude, we're going to have to list crew makeup. Oh, yeah, we did. And we say, oh, we didn't say crew. We said equipment. Yeah. Part Same the thing. Part of the <laughs> <laughs> JK, we appreciate everyone who helps us yeah, in this no, production. Cut that out. 
Yeah, so if, if actors cost two hundred per day, and we have five actors, woo, that's a thousand dollars per day for actors. Oof. Yeah, which we really, you're right. We really do have four actors. Yeah. I think. But I mean, we might as well overestimate for yes. our purposes here. We yeah, don't need def- to do the nitty gritty. True, because mm-hmm. if we overshoot it, excellent. Yep. Location. Location. Assuming that we have to rent a place mm-hmm. for the time, it's usually like two hundred dollars a day. Averages, yeah, that's fair. Maybe say two fifty just in case. Um, yeah, and that's just a house mm-hmm. on like Airbnb or this other website. Also, if we want to get crafty, because we kind of have to be, well, we could be like shooting at this Airbnb for one day because like only like the dining room or whatever works for the scene and we have to shoot something at something else and maybe we have like a free like area where it's like oh this we own this we can do this here right yeah definitely or we know someone Mm -hmm. somehow that has a house that we could use like i feel like location is probably one of the options that can be the cheapest yeah Mm -hmm. i mean i was literally thinking that we could shoot zoe on the phone in our kitchen in my in maddie and my kitchen oh yeah totally totally like yeah or in our dining room Mm -hmm. yeah like either of your parents houses we could totally shoot in yeah and it would be like good looking yeah they're very modern yeah you have a really good point that maybe we do find a place that's free and accessible and guess what we just knock off like 500 600 dollars from this production right. totally so totally. like that, that, that's a really good i'm glad you pointed that out swain in terms of like saying like guerrilla filmmaking or whoever pointed that out because yeah this this is definitely gonna be it you know yeah mm-hmm. like we're we're gonna try to find any way we can to kind of pinch the money and yeah you know. mm-hmm. i mean we're definitely gonna aim high yeah. and like find the things that fit our vision but like we also have to be realistic and just find which ways we can like mm-hmm cut corners in order to like we're gonna have to focus our our budget in very important places and yeah yeah, i mean good acting and good lighting can make any not any but can make a lot of free locations work yeah maybe maybe the better term is being creative with our budget yes because we're not like trying to like rip people off or anything we're just trying to see what we can do to like lessen the expense on us Mm -hmm. yeah that's it's a precious resource and so Mm -hmm. we have to yeah we have to prioritize and be creative that brings us to what else would we have to pay for on a daily basis food food i mean that depends on what we bring for food like we can i mean assuming i feel like it's pretty customary to like buy lunch for the crew and i mean honestly dude like honestly maybe we just make sandwiches for everybody well, I was going to say, right, like, but we you still get, have to spend money on that. Well, I know, I know. But, like, we don't have to get pizza every day. Yeah. Right. I think, like, if we wanted to, we could, like, figure out ways to, like, make, like, I mean, we can't do sandwiches, but we can also do, like, big, like, things that, like, like, like oh, fuck, casserole. So casserole, yeah. <laughs> Stuff that can yeah. feed a lot. <laughs> right. You know, like, like, taco in a bag or whatever. Lasagna. Lasagna. Fuck, shit yeah. like that. Like, you know, like, mm-hmm. we're feeding, like, four people we are i guess four people in the crew yeah like uh, i feel like it's manageable if we just like find out like these big meals or like you said make sandwiches yeah um as long as like people are like fed and like people don't get hangry yeah that's the main thing yeah Um, or or maybe honestly maybe we just do snacks and like we tell like the actors like a regular job like you have you're in charge of your like own lunch like we yeah like we'll bring water and cheetos but like you yeah. have to bring like your own lunch if you yeah. want it. I'll make charcuterie, yeah. sure, but like maybe we yeah. don't have to like do right. a whole thing. Have a spread, but not a we're, we're, right. yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, I. So I mean, is that maybe like let's aim at the high end and say like fifty dollars a day for food? Yeah, I think f- to I... feed, let's say ten people. Yeah, especially mm-hmm. if we like like make it like if it's from the grocery store, you know, yeah. Yeah. I think $50 would feed people for a day. Yeah. Or I mean, that's probably how much like ordering from Domino's would end up being. So it's yeah. like, um, and maybe we have a conversation about the crew now ish so that we know how many people we would have to feed. Cause we'll have our four actors and us. Do you guys want to talk about crew? Yeah. Uh, Does so it we, have to do with budget? 
I think so, because yeah. it depends on like what we want to pay people. Depends on what the crew is doing, because realistically, with the yeah. three of us, I wouldn't think we would need to have another paid person. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, uh, we will need a makeup artist at some point yeah. to mm-hmm. do the dead guy, which you could do the makeup or we could find someone who does makeup. Mm-hmm. The only other position that I think I would would think that it would be like good to have is a script supervisor. Yeah. But so like one of us couldn't do that. We could. It's just like uh, it depends on like what other tasks we're doing because if right. it's like us three only, like one's gonna have to do audio, one's gonna have to be on camera, one's probably gonna have to be on prompter or focus or whatever. You know, there's gonna be multiple tasks. So I guess like, and I'm, I'm not saying that we need to have this, but I think it'd probably be useful to like have someone who knows a script forward and back and knows where we are, and their sole job is to keep an eye on things, keep an eye on things, and like mm-hmm. make sure that we don't cut something out on accident yeah. i mean that would be really nice because mm-hmm. i mean we're yeah i mean we're gonna be in the shit yeah and yeah so to have someone who like it's their sole job to just make sure our paperwork is lined up mm-hmm. would be pretty nice um i know i had you on as a script supervisor or like kind of just reading through the shot list for a music video um maddie i had i had maddie on once reading through the shot list um we shot with lucid at the studio in Minneapolis. Check it out. Linked in the description. <laughs> um, and yeah, so it was like me behind the camera mm-hmm. and Lucid as the subject. And then and Maddie was just there like running down the shot list, just telling us what was next. And I was like, I really felt like, you know, like me and Lucid makes it efficient. could get in yeah. and get connected. And yeah, just like, OK, what's the next cue? It was really nice. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we could probably just have like one of our dumb friends help us, you know. Oh, for sure. Okay. Like, do we have to pay one them? of our wonderful friends? Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, one uh, of our little dumb friends. <laughs> I, I guess like if there if we have someone who's willing to volunteer, hell yeah. Right. I would be I'd be super thankful for that. Uh, I also want to guess keep in mind that like people it's a tough time out there. People yeah. want to get paid. And if that means if we can't pay them and that just means that we can't have someone, that's OK. We can make it work without someone like that i just think it'd be really nice i will write it down mm-hmm. yeah you mentioned well okay so i guess also a sound person would be nice but yeah that's what i was just <laughs> i was just gonna say that and maybe we'll just write down a list of like people who we would like to have around yeah. and we can kind of figure out if we have people who we know who would do it for free mm-hmm. or yada yada so an audio engineer mm-hmm. who can yeah just watch all of those things because i mean that gets it gets so technical just having to like maintain the equipment and making sure that everyone's vocals are coming through. Like we're busy making sure that everyone is like giving the right performance and the camera is looking right and the lighting is looking right. So like to have someone just to make sure that we're hearing that performance, Mm -hmm. huge. Um, Another one. Okay. This isn't an everyday kind of a thing, but I was thinking about our script and I think that this might be a really important person to at least contact stunt coordinator. Interesting. Because we have some action scenes. We have some violence. We have, you know, we like, we throw some hits and mm-hmm. things like that. I bet I could do that. Right on. I volunteered to be stunt coordinator. <laughs> you have to look like the people. <laughs> what? Stunt, stunt? stunt coordinator. Oh, like coordinator. Oh, who, yeah. For some reason, I thought you meant stunt double. I know, <laughs> not a stunt double. <laughs> no, just to like make sure that like what we're doing isn't going to hurt anybody, that's but it's also going to like look good on camera. Yeah, that's fair. We, I'm thinking about like Zoe getting her head slammed into the door and things like that. Like, I'm not really sure how to make that work. Yeah. Figured out. Mm-hmm. That being said too, like uh VFX makeup or something like with the throat slit and things like that. Like, I don't a hundred percent know how we're going to make that happen. Yeah. That is a very good question. I wonder if that's also like part of the makeup artist. Yeah. I you think, it, I think if we got in like a horror, makeup artist Mm -hmm. part of post-production would be if yeah because it's part of the budget for post-production i wouldn't mind hiring on a vfx artist for some of the shots that we have like which ones uh well we were talking about the baby chicken oh true Mm. also if like we need to like say like our location isn't exactly what we wanted and like we had the green screen, some things in there. I guess that's also could be us too. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we're pretty we're pretty good behind the wheel. Mm-hmm. But for the baby chicken, 
I still think it should go in there, personally. <laughs> Same. Put it in the budget. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's in there. Uh, yeah. Well, I was trying to go down a checklist of like the stuff that we need on a daily basis, and then the stuff that we just buy once and have it. Oh, that's fair. Okay. Yeah. A makeup artist and an audio engineer, I think, are people who we would want on a daily basis. And based on scheduling, we can cut we can plan for it now but then when it comes to scheduling we can cut around it and Mm -hmm. use less of the budget um what was i gonna say oh just like to have some just to kind of go back to makeup artists like to have someone on standby who's like it's their job to make sure that like people's hair and outfits look good Mm -hmm. and like on top of just makeup and stuff Mm -hmm. that would be super handy too yeah i guess i thought that would fall onto script supervisor Mm -hmm. because they're the ones who are like hey this is this shot and this person's supposed to be wearing this 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 and this oh sure but i mean like if a fly i mean yeah sure they can they can be very multi-purpose we all are yeah we all will be hell yeah okay cool i have those split up into daily crews and specialty crews on our little list it seems like everything on a daily basis one other thing to consider for daily basis is if we need to rent any equipment Mm. um that's something i think potentially as far as renting, I mean, maybe some audio equipment, I think. OK, so I guess we in our possession have a minor lighting setup. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we're set on cameras. Yep. Our audio isn't great. Our audio setup isn't great. So like just on a personal level. Yeah. Also, our lighting setup needs work. Yeah. So, I mean, to get I think some like supplementary lights and like some professional audio equipment would be nice Mm -hmm. but yes uh i i think we should plan it in the budget just in case i have no idea what that would cost though i don't either Mm. do you think it's safe to say like 300 a day a day i think it would be less than that so let's let's write that okay we're lucky enough to know a lot of people in the in the area and in the industry who who came from the same place that we did, who know what it's like to try to build something from the ground up. And I think would be very willing to help us bring these things together. And so we're very lucky in that. So yeah, that's kind of our daily costs. Do we, what's next? What do you guys think is next? Props. Props. Props is probably. Propsibly props. I think if we're crafty enough, we can probably get away with like $500. Okay. Let's. Try to be a little methodical. Like, what props do we need? Right. Well, we need the decorative tabletop for the dinner. We need... Table decor. Table decor. We need prop food. Prop food. We need... Which is just food. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I want you to still. (laughs) I don't care if your hand touched it. (laughs) We need a chicken coop. Chicken coop. We need a chicken. Chicken. Oh, that's a daily cost. But yeah, I guess never mind. Potentially, <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's an expensive chicken. I can put it in the actor's column. What does the chicken cost? <laughs> Seventy-five dollars a day. God damn. No, chicken. an hour. It's more than the actors. <laughs> <laughs> um, we need a chalice. Chalice. We need eggs. <laughs> we need costumes wardrobe yeah wardrobe yeah four pairs of clothing mm-hmm. um yep we need house decor yeah that's pretty broad yeah it's pretty broad but like it's like you want to make it feel like it's their home you know and if that means like putting like a photo photos of them in the house like i wouldn't mind putting that extra step yeah yeah it's just hard to quantify exactly what you would need especially yeah. without having the location in front of us yeah um i'm trying to think of if there's an easy way to just like go through the um storyboard and see what pops up do it i feel like we didn't really draw but if they were important they got drawn there's we a need a tw- mirror we need a twig crown we need a work van for zoe no oh, yep yeah. oh we're gonna do a four escape nice is that a truck it's SUV. Perfect. Why? Because the car that's like parked outside as she's like walking out, it's an escape. It's supposed to be ah. her escape. <laughs> it's clever. And she doesn't. And ah, she doesn't. Idiot. And she dies. Spoiler alert. 
Go home. Spoilers. Um, Donnie needs a watch. <laughs> what kind of watch? A Rolex. <laughs> yeah, needs a Rolex. Uh, we need a joint. Need a joint. I wonder if we'll be able to find one of those. <laughs> we need a black egg. It's not okay, hard. Okay, we already have an egg. I know, I'm just listing things. We need napkins. We need nice napkins oh, to make yeah. swans out of. We need a swan artist on <laughs> Yeah, here. we have to learn how to <laughs> make <laughs> fucking whatever. So we need a, a subscription to Skillshare yeah. <laughs> in order to learn how to make napkin swans. We need an emotional support uh, dog, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we need egg holders. <laughs> I wonder if we get those 3D printed by a friend of ours. Oh, probably. We need a knife. I'm sure we can find a knife. Oh, a knife. That's a knife. That's not a knife. We need a bottle of scotch. We need fake blood. We need real blood. <laughs> <laughs> We've got that. We'll just tell people it's fake. We need the list. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Multiple copies. Need a fancy door for shadow casting. That's true. Okay. That's a solid props list for now. Yeah. So what? Maybe... Six hundred dollars? <laughs> yeah, it was like so five hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> My biggest fear is the door, and yep. and by biggest fear, I mean um, biggest that, uncertainty. Yeah, yeah, five hundred dollars on props. Yeah, I'll, I guess also a table too. Tables. Yeah, depending on location. I guess I'm hoping the location has a table. That's There's also like silverware and flatware and stuff yeah. that we're going to need, but what's well, like table decor? Table right? decor, sure. You, you know what I think would be fun if we had an artist um, make like a detailed like drawing or like a, a rough drawing of like what we're, what we want to see, like of like the scene, like you know concept I mean? art. Yeah, there we go, <laughs> concept art. That would be that would be fun. Yeah. If there's any artists out there uh, who have the vision. Send us some concept art. Yeah. Send, us, send, us, send us fan art. Please. I love getting We fan need to know art. you're listening. Yeah. <laughs> Is anybody out there? there? <laughs> <laughs> or am I just in the void? Yeah. Um, sick. Props. All right. Props to y'all. Let's see. I feel like I had another thing. Also a lazy Susan. Also a lazy Susan. Make it 600 now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> okay. Maybe two Lazy Susans, because one of them's probably going to be a camera mount. Yeah. That's going to be fun to create. Agreed. And no, I think that's, that's like it. the list of things that we're going to need to buy. Yeah. We say that now until well, yeah. actually, we're like, oh my God. <laughs> it's inevitable. Yeah. Here's, so I think next we determine maybe how many days we'll need to shoot. Yeah. Do you think that's a good place to start as far as like how many days it might take? Like, let's let's get a quick shot count. Why? I not. Yeah, we can. But like also, I think it's just like kind of planning it out. Like, like think about like, OK, what do we need to. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just like right. all shots aren't created equal, you know? True. So, I mean, do we do we want to look at like which scenes we could shoot in a day? Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. Maybe like a rough guesstimation. Yeah. Okay. Because well, I think. Right. I think we can shoot the dinner and the dead scene in one day. The dead. What's the dead scene? The her, her getting killed in the ritual. Okay. So, oh. Her getting killed and the ritual. Yeah. I think we can shoot those three, sh three scenes. That's two scenes. Two scenes. I think we shoot those two scenes in one day. Uh, and like if that just means we like block out lights to start in the morning, I feel like that's a full 10 hours right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so scenes eight and nine, we mm -hmm. could shoot together. Um, I think we could do... I wonder if we could shoot scene seven. I think we could shoot scene seven on the same day we sh shoot. Maybe not. Yes, Maddie. We should um, figure out how many days we'll need to shoot based on how the rooms are set up. Like, we'll need to have the table set a specific way for a certain number of scenes. We'll need mm -hmm. to have, like, 
the table not set for a certain number of things and like not be inside for a certain number of things. So I feel like that's kind of the best way to figure out because like once you break it down to like how they're each set up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Setups. So is there any other thing besides those two scenes that have that same setup? We can do the scene where introducing. So scene three. But yes. is the table all set then? No, no. The table's not set. It's it's for like hors d'oeuvres. So they're right. just sitting with the with the lazy Susan. But since that's during the day, we can shoot that in the morning and then continue on with the dinner scene at night. Well, that Matty, you have a very good point, is like we're gonna need the table to be set up for scene eight. Mm-hmm. So all it's right. like I don't think we should plan to shoot scene three where the table is empty and scene eight where the table is full all in one day because if we have 10 hours to shoot we don't want our actors to be sitting around while we build a table right that's fair so i think we should look at i mean potentially uh like scene three where the table is empty and Mm -hmm. then scene um five or whatever six is when donnie and zoe build the table Mm -hmm. and then the table's built the next morning we can come back and shoot the dinner scene that's true That's what I. That's pretty smart. That's smart. Create a budget. Three and six. And then like the chicken coop and a different day. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. like the first scene and the last scene, basically, where they're like the two different locations. Mm -hmm. That's kind of everything. So scene one is a montage. I think we could probably accomplish scenes. I kind of feel like we can accomplish scenes one, two, and three in a day. That sounds reasonable. Right? Yeah. It's like, it's just some activity, like some active kind of montage stuff, um, like a dialogue scene at the front door and then a dialogue scene in the dining room and the tour. Mm -hmm. And then potentially... So I think, you know, scene five, scene five where they're outside the chicken coop and like the scary chicken coop is kind of a separate thing. It's separate, but like. Not really. We can get it like done in the same time frame. Yeah, it's just a separate um, location kind of is, I guess, is all I'm saying. Yeah. I'm just kind of trying to figure out how to group these things. So we grouped one, two and three together. And seven and eight and nine together. Yes, because that's the ceremony. I don't know if we, I don't know if we should lump nine. You think nine should be its own thing? Well, nine is its own thing. You know, it doesn't, nine, the ceremony is the only thing that happens in that room. That's fair. You know so what I we mean? Should, we should really focus on it and like not try to rush it within like, that sequence. Right, like scene seven and eight is like the dinner and yeah. the and the chase and yeah. like the murder. Like that's a lot mm-hmm. of stuff. And I mean, you know, the dinner is mostly just kind of dialogue and stuff. Like there's not a lot of kind of crazy camera setups and stuff. Yeah. Um, so it'll probably go quick, but it is important. And stuff. I know. <laughs> I know. Why did I say that so much? Um, so like potentially honestly, since we have like dead people makeup, I think we should shoot scenes nine and ten on the same day. That makes sense. Because we'll have all of our (laughs) corpses that day. And that avoids having to have the makeup person do extensive work. Exactly. That's that's one less day that we got to sit everyone down for makeup. That's Mm -hmm. one less day we have to pay for a makeup artist, yada, yada. Yeah. Uh, So we have scenes four, five, six left to plan. Four, five, six. So four is don't tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me. Is that introduction? No. Yeah. Introductions. It is introductions. I think we could do scenes one, two, three, and four then in a day. Yeah. I kind of forgot that we split up what was originally scene three, like the tour and introductions. I yeah. forgot that we split that, split that up into two separate scenes. I think we could do the introductory montage, Zoe's int- Zoe's dialogue at the front door the tour of the house and the introductions of the siblings i think we can knock that out in a day i agree that sounds ambitious to me but 
if we're doing a 10 hour day and like we're focused and getting it done but we're not <laughs> you know what i mean that's like fair. there's always going to be shit that like we can't work totally streamlined for 10 hours straight yeah like, well let's call then scenes one two three and four i think are a good group let's call that two days right okay. i think yeah so budget two days yeah, yeah. two well, scenes a day yeah. I mean, just just I mean, yeah, depending shooting on the that scene. sequence over two days. Yeah. Right. Okay. However, that wants to work out. Yeah. Okay. And there are like insert shots in that. I mean, there's Zoe on the phone. There's Lonnie with her lover. There's David at the coffee shop. Mm -hmm. There's Donnie with his dad. Like all of that. That was kind of like insert shots that yep. probably aren't necessarily going to get shot in those two days, but mm -hmm. like are things we'll have to figure out. Yep. Yeah. And those uh -huh. are. I think definitely where like free locations are going to work out. Like if we just coffee, need like yeah. a fucking coffee shop, we can figure that out. Yeah. You know? Maybe those are all like their own day. Yeah. You know? Like the let's run around to these different places and get one shot day. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Pick up shoots. Mm -hmm. This is what they call that. And we won't luckily enough to, we won't have to pay each actor for like a full day. It's going to take like an hour. Right. Yeah, and we're going to make such good friends with these guys that they'll just be dying to run around town with us. Yeah. Oh, totally. We're big, awesome. Big yeah. time. You know what's, like, really interesting about us getting to this point in the film is, like, I'm starting to, like, cast in my head. Mm -hmm. Like, while I'm out and about in town, I'm like, oh, that person might make a good David. <laughs> oh, totally, totally. Any contenders? Did you ever go up to someone and say, do you like podcasts? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we should find those guys. <laughs> So yeah, want to be in it. Be in our film. We should make that a sticker. Do you like podcasts? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, do you guys like podcasts? Best story ever. Uh, beautiful. We're a little off topic. Scenes five and six then are the last on our list, uh, which is uh, them smoking outside at the chicken coop and then Zoe and Donnie setting the table. Which we can just do that like. Just group those together. Yeah, I think we could shoot those together. And call them like half days for each actor. Or I guess it'll be a full day. <laughs> so it'll like, be a full day, yeah. But like each one, other ones we have. Uh, so if we have scenes. So we. <laughs> wow, we took a long time to say that we will shoot scenes one, two, three, and four together. Scenes five and six together, <laughs> scenes seven and eight together, and scenes nine and ten together. Oh, good. <laughs> I was, like halfway through this discussion, I was like, we could probably just shoot it in order, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, fucking apparently. Apparently. And we That's decided so that it would be two scenes a day. All so, right. <laughs> so Perfect. a total of five days. Five days. Week's work, baby. That's yeah. right. That's kind of what I figured. I mean, we sh it shouldn't take more than a week to shoot. No, I totally agree. Weekends. So if we interpolate our other costs, if we're looking at five. OK. And OK, here's another thing that I learned today. Okay. okay, so I met up with a guy today in Mankato who shoots films. Um, he shoots all kinds of stuff, but he has been working on feature films ever since I met him earlier this year. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and he was griping to me about filmmakers that he was working with. And what he said was like, they were so, so disorganized. Their style of shooting did not match up with mine. Um, and what he said was they would sit down the camera and they would run through like 10 to 15 takes with the actors just trying to get what they wanted. And he looked at me and he goes, just sit down and rehearse and get what you want and then set up the camera. Mm. And, and that kind of, I mean, I don't know. How do you guys feel about that? Like, what do we, what do we say to like setting out a day with the actors to like rehearse and block, uh, blocking for those who don't know is like getting your movements and things like that set up so that when the actors and the cameras are moving through the scene, everything works out correctly. And so that takes some choreography. What do you guys think about doing like rehearsals and blocking for a day? I think that's probably a good idea. It probably is. Yeah. I think that a table read could get a lot of the issues out of the way. Definitely true. Because that sets at least the dialogue tone. Like yeah. the choreography, you kind of have to like know the shot that you're yeah. trying to get and the composition. And, and it's like, yeah. otherwise you're just shooting twice, it feels like. Yeah, very well, true. No, it's like the, the, the purpose of like, 
choreographing is so we only have to shoot once. It's so like we take a day to like learn what needs to be done here, how we want to do it. Uh, and then the day of it's more efficient because people already know where we need to be and we're getting rid of the, of the guesswork. Right. And I think, I think we can kind of toe the line a little bit. Like I do think that there's a, a good amount of blocking uh, like that choreography that can happen on the shoot day. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, now that all the cameras and stuff are set up, you guys know your lines. Here's kind of where we want you to go for those lines. Um, and then kind of fine tuning per shot. Mm-hmm. I mean, you guys saw our storyboards. There's a lot of shots. Like it's, you know, that's the tricky part is like a script is written chronologically with, you know, active dialogue and things like that. But at the end of the day, like you end up with 10 second shots like all the way through the story and so we kind of are setting up multiple times to tell this story Mm -hmm. um but i mean to that point a table read a rehearsal something to that effect i think it's smart to set aside a day for just to like get everyone on the same page Mm -hmm. get performances and motivations kind of under wraps Mm -hmm. because i guess i've never done like a production in this scale so i'm also like what does help yeah you know totally we are all a little bit of a fish out of water i mean Mm -hmm. austin told the story about just working in a laundromat overnight for two days like that's kind of been our filmmaking uh history up Mm -hmm. to this point yeah (laughs) so you know this is our foray into like doing it right and it's i'm excited um okay you guys want to do some calculations then let's do it so we have so hmm? i can add stuff yeah so our actors are a thousand dollars a day. So a thousand times five. Uh, let's let's just, we'll do a day rate and then we'll multiply it by the number of days. So a thousand for actors, uh, two fifty for location, three hundred for equipment, and fifty for food times five. Um, an additional five hundred for props, and we didn't put down any numbers for crew. Let's just call it. I don't know, 200 bucks for crew. Like they'll probably, I mean, they'll be friends. Yeah. 200 total. So this is for the whole production? Yeah. So, so Maddie, what is that number? Do you want to guess? I think it is 7,000. 10,000. 8,700. 8,700. All right. Okay. Now we have a rough estimate. (laughs) Yeah. I was even going to say, like, going into this conversation, I was considering, like, should we just take that number and multiply it by, like, or just, like, add 50% as, like, a fundraising goal? So... So then we would try to raise, like, 12 grand. Right. Or, like, have 10 as our number. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So we're going to be looking to raise, yeah, about... 10 grand. About Holy 10, shit. About $10,000. <laughs> Holy fuck. To make, to make this happen. But you know what? We got it. Absolutely. Oh, it's going to be a challenge. Absolutely. Everybody get your throats ready. We're about to <laughs> do some gold digging. <laughs> <laughs> so um, buy our merch. Please. Yes. <laughs> there are stickers. If you want better designs, mm-hmm. call, call us. us. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you... If you want pictures of our feet, let call me know. us. Yeah. yeah. I got some dogs here. Yeah. If you want... Uh, <laughs> family portraits or event video coverage or something call us Mm -hmm. if you just want to make a donation call us (laughs) if you want your name in the credits yes uh you know a lot of a lot of podcasts will peddle patreons and things like that uh this is our patreon get your name in the credits you can come along for the shoots hey if you if you put down a thousand dollars you can be at the shoot yeah oh yeah we might make you hold a light you can watch whatever you want (laughs) yeah (laughs) um I think I think that's going to be like a very important like question to answer maybe next episode on like what are our ideas to like raise this money? I mean like yeah, I know you named off a few. Yeah. But it's like what you know like yeah how how can we start kicking, you know? Mm-hmm. Like like what are what are our next plans? And maybe mm-hmm. we do this in a meeting and then we just kind of share on the podcast whatever works. At a certain point we were talking about shooting this in the fall. Mm-hmm. Um Fall is kind of coming and going. I, you know, a certain part of me wonders, does it make a lot of sense to like get kind of all of these logistics underneath us and Mm -hmm. then like spend the winter fundraising and then shooting in the spring and doing like a 2024 launch? 
I think that'd be a good idea. It might really work out. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, like ten thousand dollars. Like, yeah, we we need to do some fundraising. We need to figure it out. But I mean, I'm excited to figure it out with you guys because, like, holy shit! Like right now, we're at zero dollars. <laughs> I'm excited. Me too. No, it's uh, you know, this is a good number to have because now yeah. anytime, now we know. Yeah. Now we know what we're trying to hit. Yep. So, wish us luck. <sighs> <laughs> any money we save we can use for like submission fees for like the short film yeah get it out there a little bit more mm-hmm. yeah definitely cool beans awesome wow that was a fucking long talk wasn't it that was yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank y'all for uh sticking through just kind of you know maybe more logistical just kind of nitty gritty yeah. this is the reality of filmmaking yeah uh you know that our goal with this podcast was just to show like what does it actually take to put something like this together and this is what it takes and i'm stoked hell yeah let's go make some money and let's make a movie let's go make some money let's pause for room tone